Oh shit, we got a problem here. What's this? What's this guy gonna do? Is he gonna fit? He's gonna fit? Don't take out that lamp post. Oh good. This is my humble abode. And they're doing, they're building uh, like another unit basically just down here. Hopefully it won't be too loud. Well, I have to wait for that. Finally. All right, what's up everybody? It's Ryan and it's another episode of whatever this show is called, where I explore Ecuadorian food and try a new dish, teach you a little bit about the cuisine here. And today I wanna to talk about the influences on the cuisine uh, from cultures. I've talked a lot about how the food is influenced by the surrounding terrain, the, the hills, the soil types, the altitudes, with how close it is to water, uh, how close it is to the Amazon, so many different varieties of food because of Ecuador's different terrains and different climates and, and stuff like that. But the cultures have really influenced the food and it all starts with the original people of Ecuador, the indigenous people who started growing potatoes, corn, peanuts, cassava, all these different foods that we eat across the world now. And a lot of it started in Ecuador, or in Peru, or around the Andes, these areas here. So there's a long history there. Then along came the Spanish. The Spanish, they colonized most of South America and Central America, and they really represent the biggest change in food and cuisine in Ecuador. They brought their own ingredients, their own techniques, and it, it really changed the food a lot. Um, guinea pig and llama, which was the meat that they ate before, was replaced by cow and pig. Um, sh uh, agave nectar was replaced by sugar. Like, these are major, major changes to the cuisine, and it really helped shape what it is today. The Spanish also brought slavery to Ecuador. Africans came over and they brought their own types of food, their cooking techniques. So by the 19th century, the French and the English had arrived in Ecuador. They had a bit of an impact on the cuisine as well. And also, we gotta mention all the countries that surround Ecuador. For example, Peru, they're thought to have invented ceviche, which is a major, major dish in Ecuador. So all of these things have changed the cuisine over the years, but I wanna rewind a little bit. Africans came over and they brought their own types of food, their cooking techniques. About 10% of Ecuador is Afro-Ecuadorian. About 90% of the national football team is Afro-Ecuadorian. So I wanna try a dish today that very much has its roots in Afro-Ecuadorian cuisine. The majority of Afro-Ecuadorians live in the northernmost province. It's called Esmeraldas, and it's like 43% Afro-Ecuadorian, something like that. And they have a nice long coastline, so there's a lot of seafood there. So I'm going to get into some seafood with a bit of an African flair to it. And to eat it, I'm going to a market. It's called Mercado Rumenhue. Rumen, Rumen, Rumenhue. Rumenhue? Mercado Rumenhue. I'm in some random neighborhood going to Rumenhue, Rumenhue market. And I think this is a, it up here on the left. Rumenyahue is actually a word that I keep hearing. Uh, there's a highway called Rumenyahue. There's, I think this area of town maybe is called Rumenyahue. Um, the streets and then of course the market here. He is an old general. He helped liberate Ecuador from the Spanish. Here's the market. And he, his name means rock face, general rock face. He's an important historic figure in Ecuador. This market is named after him. So let's go inside, have a look. Oh, and he's got his own day. December 1st, which is in a couple days, is General Rumanyahue Day. Ah, this is a pretty cool market. It's a cool building. It's just very uh, basic, but Okay, so I don't even know the booth that I'm looking for. I know the name of the lady who runs it. Unfortunately, I'm not finding... This lady doesn't have a sign. I hope it didn't come all this way for nothing. 
definitely in the right place. Hey, here, right here. I'm going to wait until Carlos is coming home. La saison quiteña. Donde es? Is this the last? Si. Right here, I guess. Tienes encocada? En eh, no, eso se hace solo bajo pedido. O sea, usted me dice que le haga y yo le hago el día que se quiera comer eso. Por eso se les va a pedir. De ahí lo que tengo hoy es pescado frito. Ajá. Ok, gracias. La verdad. It's a fail. Hmm. I don't know what happened to the place, but it's not here. I gotta regroup. Okay, I gotta regroup. Okay, I got a new plan. I'm going to another place that's over here. I just got off another bus. I'm bouncing all over the place. It's starting to rain. Pissed me off a little bit, but I think we're gonna be okay. Right here across the street, we got a, a bull ring. This is an old bull fighting ring. It's called Plaza de Toros. Kind of cool, I love the, the shape of these things. There's another one downtown and it's got a tennis court. They've installed a tennis court there. That's really pretty cool. Anyway, so we're going deep into here somewhere. Um, and it's a place that specializes in food from El Meraldez, which is the province where this dish was created. So they'll have it and hopefully it'll be good. Uh oh, there's some thunder. Okay, I did it. So this is encocado. Encocado, you stick that word in Google Translate and translates it to something like uh, glued or something. Uh, but the actual meaning is en is in in, coco is in coconut, cado, auto, I don't know what that part means, but it's essentially a dish that's made in a coconut milk. This is like a really fragrant coconut, Ooh, coconut sauce. It's really good and it's got some herbs in it could just be cilantro comes with some patacones patacones are bananas sliced up fried crispy they're like a special kind of banana like a green banana i believe and a pile of rice and i also got some banana chips popcorn and toasted corn bits so i got the shrimp version it's actually probably more popular to get the fish version it's usually a sea bass um, but, I mean, you can't go wrong with shrimp. Shrimp has been my friend in Ecuador. It's all been really tasty. Mm. No exception here. The sauce is very much like, feels a little Thai, a Thai sauce. I'm gonna throw some lemon on it. Love me some lemon. Lemon on that, lemon on all that. Here's a little fun fact. For my Chinese friends, half of China's imported shrimp comes from Ecuador. The little ahi sauce, some pickled onion, a little bit of this coconut sauce, and a shrimp. It's just a beautiful combination. It's sour, um, kind of sweet, and rich. What else we got? So when they cook this, they'll take the, the milk from the coconut, they'll take the pulp from the coconut, and cook it all together, make it really rich and powerful. Throw some lime in there and uh, cilantro. Sometimes they'll cook the fish or the shrimp in it. Sometimes they'll just pour it on after. This place is located just beside a gas station here. The gas station's called Mass Gas. More gas. It's a chain. I like that. Mass Gas. This dish is a little bit more expensive than other food here because of the seafood. It cost me about eight. I think it was eight twenty all this, which is a lot of food, and it's a really tasty meal. Pretty festive in here. Another great Ecuadorian dish. This one's really bright and refreshing, unlike a lot of other dishes that are kind of heavier. And um, I guess we can thank slavery for that. No, this is not, that's not how this video is gonna end. Actually, the first slave ship that landed in Ecuador was on its way to Peru, and it got shipwrecked off the coast of Ecuador, and the slaves escaped, and they started a community in Esmeralda, so somebody should actually make a movie about that. It was pretty cool. I love a good mix of cultures. It makes really good food. And um, you can really feel it in Ecuador. You can, you can feel it, the mix of cultures. 
and you can taste it, which is a much better way to end this video. Before I wanna buy myself, I don't wanna hang around y'all. Pray for good health. One day I'm really gon' fall. Fuck around and buy the whole mall. Breaking that cake, flexing 700 in the bank. Not a superhero, I don't save. Look at my face, look at my grades. Don't match up, no love, fuck a date. I just fade when I hit.